good morning everyone today we are going to discuss about neutral zone in complete enzymes so first uh, we all know what is neutral zone when all the remaining natural teeth are removed there exist within the oral cavity a space that may be called the potential danger space within this space there is an area that has been termed as neutral zone or the area of minimal conflict so to define it is defined as an area in an edentulous mouth where during function the forces of the tongue pressing outward are neutralized by the forces of the cheek and lips pressing inward so it is an area of equilibrium so the concept of neutral zone was first introduced by sir wilfred fish in his textbook the principles of complete dentures in 1933 so there comes the question why we have to record the neutral zone was it really important so the importance lies in that the principle of neutral zone it is based on the concept that the complete dentures they have to be stable and retentive and it should be in good harmony with the normal neuromuscular functions such as speech mastication swallowing smiling laughing these all the activities involves the synergistic action of the tongue lips cheeks and floor of the mouth the objective of new using neutral zone concept is to position the external surface that is the outside surface of the denture in such a way that the force exerted by the tongue internally they are counteracted or rather balanced by the forces of the cheeks and lips which act externally so the muscles involved in recording the neutral zone are basically there are two groups of muscles one the muscles those muscles um, of the cheek and lips and muscles of the tongue these muscles of the cheek and lips they exert the forces uh, towards inward direction that is towards the danger danger flange from the outside and muscles of the tongue exert outward force on the danger flange from inside although all the muscles of the lips and cheek are involved uh, some muscles give more importance like buccinator muscles plays a very important role in establishing the neutral zone as we all know the buccinator is known as muscle of the cheek it arises from uh, from an area above the first molar and it is inserted below lower molars during function as the buccinator contracts the cheeks are pressed against the teeth and the alveolar process uh regarding tongue there are extrinsic muscles of the tongue as well as intrinsic muscles the major extrinsic muscles are styloglossus palatoglossus hyoglossus and genioglossus these muscles help in moving the tongue to various positions during speech mastication and swallowing during function the tongue is in contact with the lingual flange of the lower denture and the palatal surfaces of the upper denture because of this contact the tongue is a dominant factor in establishing the neutral zone and therefore instability or lack of stability of the lower denture so the position of the tongue is a very important factor in 
uh, establishing stability of the lower denture. So in short, the forces acting on a denture, Dr. Fish described the cross section of a stable denture in the molar area to be triangular in shape with the tooth being the apex and the denture periphery or the flanges as the base of the triangle. Uh, you can see in this diagram that a force exerted on an inclined plane has two components. Uh, the first component uh, act in the direction parallel to the inclined plane, that is C in this diagram. And the other component called the normal force act perpendicular to the inclined plane. In this diagram, it is denominated as B. In a danger, the polished or external surface act as inclined plane. You can see in the diagram. So if the danger are placed in the neutral zone and the inclined planes of the external surfaces are properly fashioned, then the force acting on the danger are of equal magnitude and the resultant normal force will be in the seating direction. So this force uh, will be uh, acting as a seating force rather than dislodging force. If the dangers are not in the neutral zone, the lateral force will be unequal and will not provide the equilibrium necessary for a stable danger. This will result either in the dislodgement of the danger or unequal pressure on the ridge. This can create uh, unwanted resorption of the ridge also. Uh, now coming on to the danger surfaces or different surfaces of a danger. Uh, Sir Wilfred Frisch in 1948 described a danger having three surfaces. The first one is impression surface or intaglio surface. It is that part of the danger which is in contact with the tissues and on which the danger rests. Second surface is, is occlusal surface. It is an area of the danger that is in contact with the teeth, either natural or artificial of the opposite jaw. And the third one is the polished or external surface. It is the rest of the danger that is not the part of the above two surfaces. That is the buccal and lingual surfaces of the posterior teeth and labial and lingual surfaces of the lower anterior teeth. So these are the three surfaces of a danger. Uh, 